Our last connective tissue is the fluid connective tissue called blood. You're probably familiar with blood. I'm just going to draw a very rudimentary vial of blood here so I can point out the different parts that a blood sample were you to see one taken from a patient. Right? So if we think about this blood sample here, all the heavy stuff is going to fall to the bottom if I let this sample sit on the counter or if I centrifuged it, put it in a machine which spins everything down by weight. I might want to uh, do this to see how my patient was doing as far as their hematocrit. So we'll call this red portion down here the hematocrit. It's really just the percentage volume of red blood cells. Okay, so that's one thing in our blood sample. Another thing in our blood sample, I'm going to color the entire upper portion of this sort of a yellow. This part is known as the plasma. Plasma. And there's this funny little band in the middle called a buffy coat. Now this is not a lesson on fractionated blood, meaning blood that is no longer in a whole sample, but it is um, divided by weight pretty much. But this is easier if you look at it this way in order to identify the things that are in a blood smear that you would see under a microscope. So what's in plasma is mostly water. The other things that you can't see uh, are like ions. Those are things with positive, negative charges on them. So if you see something like um, sodium, potassium, anything that has a positive or negative charge, we could just refer to that as an ion. There's, um, oh boy, there's um, hormones proteins, all kinds of anything that's very lightweight, all floats up to the top. The lightest weight stuff is in the plasma. What's in the buffy coat is the next heaviest thing. And that's really the white blood cells, which are your immune cells, and platelets or clotting. Okay, and then down at the bottom, we're going to have the red blood cells and what's called the hematocrit, which is just the volume percentage of red blood cells that have been spun out by weight in a centrifuge. So if we think about blood, it's the liquid transportation system in the body. It's also a reservoir. So it's pretty much liquid transportation for blood gases like oxygen, carbon dioxide, ions, or salts, electrolytes, if you want to do it that way, hormones, proteins, and the immune system itself. Not the only place where the immune system hangs out, but it's one way that the immune system moves around and gets to where it needs to be. So if you think about it, it's like a mobile hospital. The blood is really, really fascinating and interesting. It's connecting the body, isn't it? Everywhere in the body. So hence, connective tissue, because its matrix is mostly water uh, with this, this other stuff, uh, the ions, the hormones, protein, that kind of stuff called plasma. And then the cells, no, don't forget the buffy coat. And the buffy coat is kind of part of the plasma. So white blood cells, platelets, uh, and plasma are all together. And then the hematocrit are the cells themselves, the red blood cells. These are the, uh, these are the cells in this connective tissue. Let's draw one very simply, easy to recognize on a microscopic slide if stained well. You'll learn lots of different appearances of red blood cells um, and pathology. Large ones, oval ones, clear ones, um, small ones, all kinds of things. 
But if if I do this, I'm not going to color all these in. But can we see that these are red blood cells without me coloring all of them in? Then I'm going to add. I'm going to add a bigger cell every once in a while around here. And this cell has a funny looking nucleus. And they're not going to stain this color necessarily, but I'm just drawing it like this. That's a white blood cell. And if you know the other name for white blood cells, it's leukocyte. Leuco means white. So a white blood cell, um, these polymorphonuclear cells, you might see them. White blood cell, leukocytes. All right, different ones. And then here's our red blood cell. And you'll notice on the microscopic slide that you can kind of see through the center of these red blood cells. And that's because the red blood cell is shaped like this disc. And so this is a red blood cell from the side if you were to pinch it between your fingers and it was large and you could see it. And so the center, you'll notice it has these two concave areas and that means there's, uh, it's thinner right here, so light goes through. And so that's why on your sample that you're gonna see that some of them are gonna look like donuts. Now this is a normal blood sample. We're not talking about a pathological sample where you might see different sizes and levels of hemoglobin, depending on why the sample was taken in the first place. Um, another thing you'll see, I'm just going to throw these guys in here, just these little just pieces is what they look like. Just look like somebody got dust in your sample, but they're not dust. They're really important. They are platelets. Platelets are for clotting, and they're just pieces of, an, of a larger cell. So that's why they look like pieces, because that's that's what they are. So th those are the things you want to be able to identify on a blood sample. An interesting person to visit her website. I don't know her, but uh, let's see, her name is Christine Crafts. Or, I think it's Crafts with an S. Anyway, she has a website that's helpful for students called Half Bites. And she's a she's a hematologist, pathology hematologist hematologist who studies blood pathologies. Um, there's lots on her website about different blood dyscrasias, anemias, all kinds of stuff that's interesting to read. So just a cool website. And I believe she is, can't remember if she's an MD or a PhD, so I'm not going to add it in there. Anyway, that's what you need to know about blood and blood samples when you're seeing it under a microscope for this class.